Uh, so I want to talk to you from the very beginning. T start with where are you from and how you got into this in general. I mean, look, I've had such a varied, like I tell people, I have truly reinvented myself professionally, like I think three or four times. Like I went to law school after college. I practiced corporate law. I mean, mm -hmm. do I look like a corporate lawyer to you? No. Well, it was <laughs> not the most interesting profession. You know, it's like I tell people, when you go to grad school, most people that spend money on grad school, like they love it. They're studying neuroscience or psychology, getting a PhD. Like I didn't love law school. So right then I should have been like, I don't know if this is like the right profession for me. I have to say, I use law in my current job as the mm -hmm. host of Behind the Velvet Rope when I interview people. But so I did that. Then I fell into HR and recruiting. Then I had my own staffing agency. So I've really like reinvented myself many times. I This is said with no ego. I'm kind of like a Bethany Frankel when it comes to business. Right. Now, I don't have the uh, rumored $120 million that she sold her company for. But, you know, like, I'm really like, when I go into a profession, I figure it out. And I'm just like, how do you do this? Like, clear out of my way. Let me right. figure this out. And then I figure it out. Now, I can't do that with like operating on someone's brain. Like, I'm not. But with most professions, I think if you go into it and you're like, how do you do this? I'll figure it out. So, after I sold my company, which was a staffing agency, I was kind of like in between gigs. I wasn't really doing anything. Listen, I grew up loving pop culture, mm -hmm. really, like 90210, Melrose Place. Like I've always been into pop culture and I've always been into reality TV from the beginning. The Simple Life, Laguna Beach, The Hills, the classics, Rachel, come on. <laughs> so I was in between gigs and I was friendly with a lot of these real housewives. Mm -hmm. And they would always say to me, like, you should do something with this. Like, you're not doing anything with your life. Like, this is a business. And when I started my podcast, it really was like Wendy Williams style. That was my vision. I started one day a week. Now we're seven days a week. Mm -hmm. But it really was Wendy Williams style of like, you and I, Rachel, you could tell could have a drink at night, but I'm going to talk about it the next morning. Right. And say, you know, Rachel, you could tell, you know all about her. Well, this is what happened last night. She showed up. She was five minutes late. She had three drinks. She fell off the bar stool. None of that happened the other night when you and I went out. Right. But let's be did, clear that did not happen. Let's be clear that did not happen. But if it did, I might talk about it. Right. So it really was like, oh, and I really, this is how I refer to it. It's kind of like a child of a celebrity. Like your life is different. Like I've had people from Mob Wives on my show. I love talking to them about like when you grew up, like did you, were you aware that what your father was doing was probably not everyone's father's profession. It's the same thing. So it, it was more like I had access to all these like reality TV people and I was out with them and I, it wasn't so interesting to me. It was just my life. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, I bet you these stories of who's leaving with someone who went home with this guy and that I'm like, this might be interesting to the public because these are stories like behind the velvet rope. Like, let me tell you what actually. So that's like Wendy Williams. She would go out with a celebrity and be like, let me tell you what happened last night when I was out with Black China. Right. So right. that's kind of how my podcast started. It morphed into something totally different. It morphed into these interviews that because I was like, no one really cares about me. They want me to interview all these famous people. And now it's kind of come back to like five days a week. There's some interviews. And now the stories have kind of seeped back in because actually that's what people do want to hear. How did you come up with the name? It's such a good name. Is it? Because I? it's funny. There were two names. There was between Behind the Velvet Rope and Name Dropping. Oh. It's another good one, that right? That is a good one. So it really was like, you know, Behind the Velvet Rope. Like, let me take you Behind the Velvet Rope. Like, this is what happened last night. I was at the bar with, you know, Ramona Singer. Uh -huh. And this is – so it's more like, let me peel back the curtain and tell you what actually is happening with these people when they're not on TV. Right. So that's kind of where the name came from. Mm -hmm. And now it kind of works that it's all these different celebrity and reality TV interviews. Like, let me – I really like to get into, like – it's kind of like what we were talking about before off air. Like, I don't judge anyone based on anything you see on TV. It's more like I want one-on-one. -on -one. I want to know who you are. Right. You know, and of course you cover the highlights of someone's career, but I really want to know what makes you tick. Well, you know that behind the velvet rope, there's so many different things that go into reality versus what's really 
you know, perception and reality are two totally different things. So um, it's so great to have your podcast where you get to know the people that people think that they know because they don't. So you get to hear from those stars and hear about their lives or hear about who they really are because your podcast is specifically talking to reality stars. And what people don't know is that these reality stars, sometimes their storylines are completely concocted and they're not even true. But you got a firsthand knowledge of that by being on Millionaire Matchmaker. Talk about that. 